three, two, one. Good afternoon and welcome back to Kent and Judith Miller Stadium in Fulton, Missouri. The Westminster Blue Jays getting set to host Sewanee in week number two. And we have beautiful weather on hand for today. Aaron Moser, Mickey Doolittle, it'll be a pleasure to broadcast this one out to you guys today. It was a tough loss for Westminster last week, 47 to nothing against Rose. They were limited to 52 yards of offense, but with the Sewanee team, they were two and eight a year ago and now they're 0 and two to begin this year fresh opportunity for the Blue Jays yeah the Blue Jays can't overlook them though they Swanee was picked ninth to finish to finish ninth in their conference and have been unable to pick up a win so far but they've looked decent in their first couple of games they really struggled offensively but defensively maybe a little bit better so it's going to be an interesting matchup I think this game might be a little bit closer than last week Aaron yeah the turnovers might play a big part of that Blue Jays got a turnover from Stevenson, an interception a week ago, and Sewanee forced five out of Maryville in week one where they lost their opening game of the season. So how can you kind of see the turnovers factoring in today? Yeah, they're huge. I think the team that finishes with less turnovers are going to be the one that wins. So limiting those turnovers, keeping it clean on special teams and on defense and offensively is going to be key in all three phases. Well, we'll have kickoff for you just coming up. We'll be right back with more Westminster Blue Jays football. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP board's learning outcomes here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. The technical difficulties, Westminster with the football, driving after receiving the opening kickoff. Brandon Perry brought it down for a good return, and now that brings up five a second run, down and five. <laughs> Westminster hosting Sewanee in week two action. And it's Keegan Zeibel 
as they go to the I formation to begin today. Zeibel under center will hand it off to Hessel, and Hessel barrels through the middle of the Sewanee defensive line to pick up a few, about three yards. Three yards game. Yeah, Hessel like struggled Prince. a little bit last week. This entire Westminster team struggled a little bit last week. But finding that traction on the ground game is so key, especially because that opens up everything else within your offense, including the pass game. You can spread the field a lot easier like that. But a big third and two here early. Westminster at their own 48-yard line. Aiden Campbell, the wide receiver on the near side. Zeibel drops back, looks his way, and then fires. And he soars it too high for Campbell, who was wide open. And Zeibel was staring him down the entire way. And he just overthrew it. And now the Westminster punt team comes out. And they were out a lot last week. Dawson Brandt punted seven times. And he's back to punt once again. Dyer Barnes back to receive for Sewanee. Yeah, just unfortunate there. He had a couple of, a little bit of separation Campbell did on the hitch route and just couldn't find him with Zeibel. A little wobbler of a punt by Zeibel that will bounce at the 30, take a Westminster bounce and roll to the 20 yard line. And that is where it will be Mark Ben Wallace. Marks it down and Sewanee will take over on the right hash at their own 20 yard line. 13-23 left to play in the first quarter. Scoreless between Westminster and Sewanee traveling in from Sewanee, Tennessee. Uh, the Southern Athletic Association. They are led by Jeremiah Young, the quarterback in the shotgun. Right now with his running back, Michael McGee, to his left. Three wide receivers. And Young will take the chest high snap, roll out to his left, look downfield, and he fires, and it is batted up and incomplete at the 40 yard line. Great coverage downfield by Logan Blicken, who had a really nice day and was a silver lining for Westminster against Rhodes last week. Yeah, that was a near interception right there, nearly getting the Blue Jays all the momentum in the world, but all for naught. And that's been a problem with Sewanee is the turnovers this year. Second down in 10, and a screen pass set up on the far side and taking it down the sideline and for a first down, it's the Sewanee Tiger. It's Degum Samuel out of Nashville, That's Tennessee, the and they push That's him out of bounds at the 35 down. yard line. So first down for Sewanee. Jeremiah Young, the freshman, He takes the high snap, looks to his left and fires. Incomplete, more sticky coverage by Logan Blicken. As it falls incomplete, great Pass coverage incomplete. on Cooper Broke Alford, the intended tight end. Yeah, good sign here, Blicken's been all over the place to begin the game, flying to the football, playing some tight coverage. Second down and 10 at the Sewanee 35 yard line, left hash, hand off up the middle to McGee, breaks through into open space towards the 45. They bring him down at the 44 in the middle of the field. Number Flag is down. McGee with a nice rush. Yeah, Flag it is play. in the area of holding and both teams already walking back to the original line of scrimmage here. So, and that is the call. It is holding against the offense. So, Sewanee driven backwards after Holding getting the their Tigers. second first down in the game, and down. that is a break for the Blue Jays. It was a big run up the middle, and that was a problem last week as well, stopping that run game. Penalties were a bit of a problem for Sewanee a year ago. At about 50 yards per game towards the bottom of the SAA. So brings up second down and long as they continue to move Sewanee back to the 25-yard line. Towards the left hash, second down and 20 yards to go on Sewanee's opening drive after Westminster stalled. Jeremiah Young takes a snap, fires the screen pass again to Samuels, and he is brought down after a short pickup, about two or three yards. Caught on the Samuel, tackle on the far side by Topliff. By number 16, Deacon Stedman. Make that Deacon Stedman. Yeah, they were flying to the ball. Stedman and Topliff both in the area, and they got beat on that screen pass a couple of plays ago, but now they do a great job defending it. Dylan Farrell also there on the stop, third down and 17. Young sets up the screen, and Samuels is blown up. 
blown up by Deacon Stemmen, who read that half back, half back screen all the way. Once again breaks up the play. That brings up a fourth down and long, and the Sewanee punt team will come out. But about as good of a start as you can ask for for the Westminster defense. This is an energized defense that looks like they have taken number last five, week's Perry loss personally, back. and they have come out punt firing here in the second Dan half. Satterfield. So Satterfield will punt it away for Sewanee. And a high one that wobbles in the air. A great long punt that will take a Sewanee bounce inside the 20-yard line. And will be marked down at the 11-yard line. And that's where Westminster will take over. That is a great punt. A lot of hang time. That's what people don't recognize about those punts is that you want hang time on it. You want it to take a lot of air time up in the air and give your coverage unit time to get down the field and that is exactly perfectly done. 11.55 to play in the first quarter, scoreless between Westminster and Sewanee. Westminster getting set to take over at their own 11 yard line for their second offensive drive of the day. Zeibel under center in the I form and he hands it off to Kern, the fullback, and he's gonna get tackled for no pickup right down to the line of scrimmage is where he's brought down. Yeah, and a lot of struggles offensively last week for this Westminster team, especially with Kern trying to get traction up the middle, just couldn't ever find it. Kern will head to the sideline. Normally the starting running back, what he will start today as a fullback. Dante Phillips is the running back now with Kendall Outlaw as the fullback, still in the I formation. Aiden Campbell, the receiver on the near side. That's a false and, start. And that will back up Westminster a bit more. False start on the yeah, Billups moved a bit early. He took that step forward, perhaps not on the same page with the snap count, and that will move them back halfway distance to the goal line. You can expect a low scoring game today. Both these teams had an average of a combined 25 points per game a year ago. Second down and long. Zeibel in the shotgun will take the snap and then fire it quickly out to the running back. Hessel, he makes one guy miss and then gets back to the original line of scrimmage before being brought down at the 12 yard line. And that's a big play, even if it is to give your punting unit a little bit of breathing room out the back of the end zone. Hessel did a great job of Making a man miss there. Getting a little bit of extra green grass and now a much more third and manageable. Third down and eight from the Westminster 14 yard line is what they make it. Campbell and Perry, the wide receivers to the near side. Hessel to the right of Zeibel in the shotgun. Four down lineman for Suwani as Zeibel will take the snap, flushed out of the pocket, will try to take it himself up the middle of the field, but is quickly brought down by Keegan Glaze, the, the junior out of Nashville. Oh, well, they do get the first down. It was really, a bit really tricky. Nice run. It was tricky because that pocket that was almost over pursuit from Swanee, who got really deep back into that backfield and he couldn't really tell where the original line of scrimmage was as he stepped up and a really nice run by Zeibel. Zeibel in the I formation and a handoff to Hessel. He has some room bouncing it to the far side and he has the first down and a bit more. Mark him down at the 35 yard line. And here's the run game that we talked about that Westminster needed to get going this week. They have been great going up the middle between the tackles today. Zeibel with the undesigned run just to play a go for a first down and immediately follows it up with another run. Back to the eye formation, two wide receivers, Campbell the near side, Perry to the far side. Zeibel under center, first down and 10, handoff to Hessel up the middle and he barrels into the linebacking core of Sewanee for a gain of seven. Mark him down at the 42 yard line. Yeah, powerful runs between the tackles. They are not afraid to run it directly at this Swanee defense who looks a, maybe a little bit tiring out there. Second down and three under nine to play in the first quarter scoreless between Westminster hosting Sewanee. Same formation. 
I form, Zeibel under center, he takes the snap, hand off to Hessel, down the right side, and off tackle, but he is brought down at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Yeah, Hessel had nothing between the tackles at the last minute, decided to try and bounce it outside, but good pursuit from Swanee, who now has forced a third down in three. Tough situation. Looks like more like two and a half right now. Far side hash. Westminster in their home powder blue. Sewanee in the road whites. Same exact formation. Jordan Kern, the fullback. Trace Hessel, the running back behind him. Third down and three. Zeibel turns around, handoff, and Hessel trying to drive forward, but he's going to be short of the first down by a yard. Keep feeding him, keep calling the same play, and eventually the defense will adjust, and that is what they did. Fourth and short, and they're gonna bring out the punt unit. Well, finally, like you mentioned, getting out of Westminster's shadow of their own end zone. So Dawson Brandt has a lot more room to punt. This time he stands at his own 28. Dyer Barnes back to receive for Sewanee. He stands inside their 20 yard line. Fourth down and one at the 44 yard line and a timeout on the field. And it is taken by timeout. Westminster. And as we're scoreless with 7.33 to go, we'll take a break with them. You're watching Westminster Blue Jays football. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older. And they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you can imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence Sorry in cultivating that. leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back -back seven week sessions, so you can. Welcome back to Kent and Judith Miller Stadium. Westminster going for it, fourth down and one. And before they can get the snap off, penalty flags are out. And John Welty tried to catch Sewanee off guard coming out with the offense out of the timeout on Westminster's 44 yard line. And that penalty will move Westminster back and they will bring out the punt team. Yeah, just unfortunate, a false start. And that drives the Westminster offense off the field. But at the bare minimum, they do get that breathing room and you can start to play the field position game in the first half. Westminster not particularly good as far as penalties a year ago as well second to last in the UMAC. 7.33 to play in the first quarter. Dawson Brandt gets set to punt this away. He takes the snap, and it's an end over end to the far side. Dyer Barnes takes it at the 30-yard line on the far side, cuts up the middle of the field, has a blocker, gets to the 39, gets across the 40, and then is brought down at the 43-yard line is where they mark him. Ben Wallace with the tackle. You talked about the field position game that is now favoring Swanee after a decent return, a shorter punt. Returned all the way up to the 43 yard line and that is where they will start. Jeremiah Young and the Swanee offense back out on the field in the shotgun, three wide receivers at their own 43 yard line. First down, Young hand off to Michael McGee up the middle, he has some room, breaks in the secondary, first down to 45 and he is brought down at the 41 yard line across midfield into Westminster territory. Big missed tackle number there from 16, Fenton McGee. who got him wrapped up but just couldn't hang on and bring him down and that is a Swanee first down. Quickly they come back up to the line with four wide receivers. Young takes the snap, drops back to pass, looks downfield, fires up the middle of the field, complete and it's caught and into the end zone goes Alford for a touchdown. Cooper Alford, the freshman out of Dallas, Texas takes the go route complete. down the seam and they break past the Westminster secondary. The ball was caught at the 10 yard line and he brought it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown Sewanee, they lead six to nothing. Yeah, just busted coverage up the seam. That was one on one and it didn't look like Westminster's zone defense. It might've been a zone, might've been man, but nobody picked him up. 
Now Alford will take the two point conversion, snap and fire the jump pass in the end zone to Jack Satterfield, the kicker. What a trickery of a play. And Satterfield gets the two point conversion off the reception. A little quick jump pass by Alford in the Westminster defense. Had no shot against that two point conversion. Yeah, that was just unfortunate. It looked like they went towards a little bit of trickeration. You don't really see that formation anytime, but that was good. They ran it directly at the line, expecting somebody to, expecting that defense to collapse down and forget about everybody else, and that's exactly what happened. They just forgot about the kicker who just ran a little four or five yard go route into the end zone for the two point conversion. 6.54 to play in the first quarter. Sewanee leading eight to nothing. They have yet to run out the kicking unit as one of the referees come out to get set for Satterfield to kick this one away back to Westminster after receiving the two point conversion pass. Brandon Perry back to receive for Westminster along yeah. with Mikkel McFarland. This is a Swanee offense that only averaged 12, just over 12 points a game last year. Certainly looking a little bit better than that today. They've been able to move the ball on this Westminster defense. They've made some stops though. Satterfield, the left footed kicker, drives this one end over end towards the near side and into the end zone for a touchback. Satterfield, the junior out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and Blackman High School certainly demonstrating a little bit of some leg power with the way that he's been able to drive it down yeah. the field. And how, how valuable is that, a kicker that can just drive it out of the back of the end zone, not have to worry about kick return coverage consistently and set that offense up right where you want him to. So Westminster takes over at their 25 yard line. First down and 10, 6.54 to play in the first quarter. Sewanee leading Westminster 8 to nothing. Zeibel in the split pistol look with Kern and Billups, the running backs. Brandon Perry, the wide receiver on the near side. Zeibel takes the snap, looks towards Perry. Now flushed out of the pocket, rolls to his right, towards the far side, looks downfield, and then will take it himself for a one yard pickup. We saw a lot of this from Zeibel against Rhodes, really trying to escape the pocket and make something out of nothing. Yeah, the offensive line really struggled against Rhodes and they've been a little bit better in the small sample size that we've seen today, protecting him a little bit more, but Zeibel, a guy that can create with his legs, get outside of the pocket, extend the play, evade some pressure, and he's gonna have to do that again today. Second down and eight from the Westminster 27 yard line. They're moving right to left. Ball on the far side hash. Same formation with the split running back. Zeibel takes the chest high snap. Looks over the middle, fires. And oh my goodness, Bryce Westerfield had it right on his hands. Hit him straight in the middle of his chest and he can't hang on to it. Ball's yeah. incomplete at the 40 yard line. Running with five, six yards of separation, nobody around him. He was just wasn't looking for it fast enough. He came out of his break like he was continuing to run down the field. Credit Zeibel to see him running wide open. He just turned his head a little bit late and got his hands up, got his hands on it, but wasn't able to secure it. Third down and eight, still in the Westminster 27 yard line. Same exact formation, split pistol. Zeibel takes the snap, looks over the middle of the field, flush out of the pocket to his left. Staying downfield, fires towards the Blue Jay logo. It's intercepted, intercepted by Hazel and he takes it and he is stuffed at the 35 yard line to make that case in Holder, the junior out of McMinnville, Tennessee. Holder had two interceptions last week and he already has a third for this season. There is a flag down. Wow, wow. roughing the passer penalty on Sewanee will save Westminster's drive. That is massive at this point of the game. Sewanee had all the momentum behind them with a big interception return and suddenly that gets wiped off the board and Westminster can continue their drive at midfield. So 
and that's Mason Holder and his interception wiped off. We talked about penalties being a problem for Swanee, and they're already surfacing in the first quarter. First down and 10 from the Westminster 43. Handoff to Billups, trying to power through inside, and he does to plunge ahead to the 49-yard line. And that brings up a second down and four. Yeah, Billups a tough, tough runner. Bigger guy, 5'11", 220, hard to bring down. And he's going to get a lot of those yards after contact. A guy that is just incredibly difficult to stop that forward momentum. 5.35 to play in the first quarter. Sewanee leads Westminster 8 to nothing. Second down and four on the right hash. Zeibel looks up, barks out some commands. Under center in the I formation. He takes a snap and hands it off to the fullback, Kern. He tries to drive ahead, and the Westminster offensive line will push Kern ahead for the first down. Mark him down at the 45-yard line of Sewanee. A little bit of the bush push there, and now some extracurriculars as Caleb C just shoved a Westminster offensive lineman, but they don't throw a flag for that. Those are momentum plays right there. Those are the plays where your offensive line and your entire team comes in to push the line, and that's when you know that there's some energy in this program right now, this, this team. Hand off to Billups, off the right tackle, and he breaks ahead, breaks one, and then runs into the Sewanee secondary, but picks up the first down, mark him down at the 34-yard line. Dante Billups with a big-time run, 203 yards a year ago. Yeah, and Westminster has started to win at the line of scrimmage, this offensive line that kind of got dominated last week has come out, and they have really out physical Sewanee today. Ball on the 33 yard line, far side hash, I formation. Campbell the receiver to the near side. Seibel takes a snap, turn around, hand off to Billis, but he is dropped in the backfield by Quinn Johnson. Quinn Johnson just an X factor on defense out of Dothan, Alabama, fifth year senior, 80 tackles, 16 for a loss a year ago. Yeah, all SAA, he was, that big defensive tackle that can come off his blocks really quickly. And that is so, so valuable in defending the run. If you can shed that block and get into the backfield, that's the key. Second down and 12 from the Westminster 35. Ball on the far side, hash split pistol. And Zeibel takes the snap, looks to his right and fires, lofting it down the sideline, incomplete. Brandon Perry on the go route and late penalty flags come out. They will be on Christian Webb, the freshman defensive back who had tight coverage, and they say he shoved Perry on the far side. Yeah, that's one of those situations where the receiver's coming back to the football. He might have overran it just a little bit, but so hard to defend that as a defender. You need to get your head around. You need to not obstruct the receiver's path to the ball, and in coming back to it, those are such tough plays to defend. So a couple of penalties on Sewanee are saving this Westminster drive. It was the roughing the passer in Westminster's own half, and now the pass interference will give Westminster a fresh set of downs at the 20-yard line on the far side hash. Christian Webb, the guilty party. High formation, outlaw the fullback. Billups the running back, Zeibel turns around, hand off to Billups, up the middle, he has some space. Bounces off a defender to the turf and then is brought down at the 14-yard line. Hard nose running, you kind of know what's coming if you're Swanee when they line up into that I formation under center, and they just can't seem to stop it right now. They're clearing paths. Sewanee leading Westminster 8 to nothing, 3.20 to play in the first quarter. Same I formation, Campbell the receiver to the near side. Seibel under center. Takes the snap, turn around, hand off to Billups, up the middle, halfback dive again, and he is driving ahead inside the 10-yard line. Mark him down at the seven-yard line. This is just a great effort from the Blue Jays to continue to plow forward right now, and they have a ton of momentum. This is, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the deepest they've been into enemy territory this year so far. That's exactly right, and it was the I formation last year that gave them some offensive success, and they've gone back to it. Shockley, the receiver to the far side, 
Zyba under center, takes the snap, hand off to Billups, off right tackle, barreling hard forward, and he is brought down at the three yard line. For the four -yard game. Brings up a second down and goal to go at the three yard line. Yeah. Between the tackles running game continues to work for Westminster as they draw closer. If you can get inside that five yard line, that opens up your goal line playbook. Pretty much anything goes right now. Trace Hessel comes in as the running back, full backfield with Kern and Outlaws, the fullbacks. Second down and goal, hand off to Kessel. He drives forward, but he is met and quickly stuffed at the two yard line, a pickup of one. But this is old time football. We talk about how historic Sewanee is. It's like we're playing all the way back in 1899. Yeah, just running it right at him. This is a fight for every inch on the field whenever Westminster gets the football. And now a huge third and two from the two yard line. One minute, 27 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Sewanee leading eight to nothing. Westminster looking for their first points of 2023. Same formation with the full backfield. Turn it around, handoff, Phillips, touchdown Westminster. Dante Phillips gets Westminster on the board in 2023. Three touchdowns a year ago. And he picks up his first for the junior out of Mexico, Missouri. Yeah, just a dive run right up the middle, same as they have done this entire drive. They do not go away from it at the end, and it is ultimately what gets them across. A local kid. Hugo Over, the new place Hugo kicker for Westminster, on its attempt the extra point. Late sub, Devin Miller runs in on the offensive line. Snap is good, the hold is good, the kick is through the uprights and Westminster is on the board and they trail Sewanee eight to seven but positive signs of life for the Westminster offense. Yeah they really were methodical in that drive going down the field took a long time for them to eventually get down the field but ultimately ends up scoring the touchdown and now you can focus defensively you have a reset in the field position battle we talked about it earlier it's so big to win that field position battle, but Westminster now with Sewanee starting theoretically where you're supposed to start, 20-25 yard line, this defense is well rested. They'll come out onto the field energized and ready to go. This is going to be an interesting stalemate here within the momentum game. Well, a minute 15 left to play in the first quarter. Hugo Hover thinks that he gets set to kick this one away. Michael McGee. Back to receive at the five yard line. Maybe Sewanee and new head coach Andy McCollum wanting a little bit of a energy infusion. Michael McGee, such an explosive runner, doesn't normally receive the kicks though. And Hover puts his right foot into it, end over end, down the near side and bounces and out of bounds. That's a penalty. And so the kicking game not strong enough there for Westminster. And you mentioned the field position battle. That's not going to help them out. Yeah, no, that might have been the broadcaster's jinx right there. It goes out of bounds. You cannot have that after you just captured all of the momentum. That's going to start Sewanee at the 40. Excuse me. Looks like they'll mark it down at the 35. And they'll take the 40. Oh, 35, excuse me. And they'll take it at, on the near side hash. Four wide receivers. Sewanee with the football leading 8-7. to seven. Jeremiah Young takes a snap, hand off to McGee. He's blown up, but he stays on his feet, and he drives ahead, and he has a few yards to gain. He should have gotten brought down as soon as he got the football, but the strength on this play, and he stays on his feet for a pickup of three. Let's go, Devin! That was exploding into the backfield. Devin Miller, who popped McGee, who did a great job to stay on his feet. Second down and six to go. Well, at the 39-yard line, man in motion to the far side. They throw it his direction, and it is incomplete. Looking for the running back of the backfield, Xavier Davidson, and it falls incomplete for Young. Adam Hickerson, the right tackle, got away with a hold on that play. He kind of flung Devin Miller down to 
the ground was a little extracurricular with it. Got outside the frame, but now a massive third down and six. Third down and six from the 39. Young takes a snap, looks over the middle of the field, rolls out to his left, stops in, lobs it to the far sideline, and it is caught at the 15. And staying on his feet and into the end zone, it's Dyer Barnes, the freshman out of Lewis County High School. Lost that football, stayed on his feet, and ran into the end zone. A huge play for Jeremiah Young down the field. A 61-yard touchdown pass. And Sewanee leads 14 to seven. Wow, just a bit of a prayer down the far sideline, giving his receiver a chance and he got it. Ball was caught at the 20 yard line. Dyer Barnes stayed on his feet and ran it the west, rest of the way. What an impressive play. As after going for two, it looks like Sewanee will attempt the extra point this time and the left-footed kick from Satterfield is up and good. And Sewanee has taken a 15 to seven advantage after the long, grueling running drive from Westminster. Quickly, Sewanee comes back with a quick strike from Young to Dyer Barnes. Yeah, that sucks all the wind out of the sails of Westminster who had that really nice drive where they were having success running the ball, but ultimately the explosiveness of Sewanee's offense comes back and throws a haymaker right back at him. Second passing touchdown of the season for Jeremiah Young. Played last year, but still has, still listed as a freshman, rather as a junior as, some of the rosters have gotten mixed up here for Sewanee's. Listed as a junior on one roster and as a freshman on another, but in any case, yeah, you get that sometimes. The COVID years and the red shirts, it's know, a little it's confusing. We're <laughs> almost past that COVID eligibility class, so we'll eventually settle around that. And another touchback from Satterfield with 30 touchback seconds to play in the first quarter. The so this is a big drive if you're Westminster. You get the touchdown drive on the previous timeout, but now you come back out, you need to respond to the touchdown once again. Keep this close going into the second quarter and well into the first half. So it's a big drive if you can continue to run the ball between the tackles, perhaps that will open up some of these passing lanes which you've had from time to time in this game. It's been a bit of an inconsistent effort from Zeibel who had those great runs but has missed a couple of receivers, especially over the middle of the field. First down and 10, ball on the Westminster 25. 30 seconds to play in the first quarter. Sewanee leading 15 to seven. Zeibel in the pistol with the split running backs. Zeibel will take the snap, look to his right, flush out of the pocket by Johnson, looks downfield and fires incomplete towards the line of scrimmage at the 25. Looking for Bryce Westerfield, his tight end. And that brings up a second down and 10. Clock stops at 23 seconds and 23.7 seconds. Yeah, I'd like to see Zeibel try and step up in the pocket there. He decided to go out towards the sidelines. If he could have stepped up, he might have had a little bit more time to throw the football and perhaps a running lane up the middle. Trey King, the wide receiver, checks into the game. He's alone to the near side. Now four wide receivers with Jordan Kern, the running back behind Zeibel. Claps and takes the snap, looks to his left. Flush up the middle of the pocket, tries to spin out of the sack, but he will be dropped by Desmond Gilbert. The freshman defensive lineman out of Dublin, Georgia. Yeah, good pursuit there from Gilbert in the entire defensive line of Swanee, who got around their blocks, got in home towards Zeibel and ultimately end up finishing off the sack. And that is the end of the first quarter, back and forth, but it was the big play from Jeremiah Young to Dyer Barnes that gives Sewanee the 15 to seven advantage. We'll take a break and come back with the second quarter. You're watching Westminster Blue Jays football. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. 
For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP Board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Welcome back to Westminster Blue Jays football. They're trailing Sewanee 15 to seven. 15 minutes up on the clock as we flip the field. Third down and 13 on the Westminster 23 yard line. They're on the far side hash. Three down linemen. They look to blitz five is Sewanee. Pistol set, Zeibel takes the snap, looks over the middle, tries to spin out of a sack, and he stays on his feet, still with his eyes downfield, has to try to get rid of it, and he is dropped inside the five-yard line by Keegan Glaze. Just a poor decision for Zeibel to hang on to the football that long, and eventually he's brought down by Glaze. Yeah, that was unfortunate that he couldn't get that away to try and throw it away. He was in a ton of danger from the get-go in that drop back. Did a great job to initially escape, but had to throw that ball out of bounds once he was outside of the tackle box. So Brant stands at, stands at the end of the end zone. Trying to punt this one away. Dyer Barnes gets set to receive it. Brant gets it away, a wobbler that moves Barnes back to the 47-yard line. He moves across midfield, crosses the middle of the field and then breaks one tackle from Wallace and then is brought down at the 43 yard line. More extracurricular activities as Wallace is shoving Sewanee Tigers. Yeah, that was a good punt that drove him back a little bit, got that forward momentum stalled and now here comes Sewanee starting over midfield in plus territory. They were able to move the ball with an explosive play on the last drive. We'll see if they can come back out and do the same. 14.01 left to play in the first half. Sawani leading 15 to seven. They have the football. Jeremiah Young in the shotgun. He takes the snap, a handoff up the middle to Xavier Davidson, and he picks up a couple plunging and diving his way for those two yards. Second down and eight to go now. Ball on the 41 yard line of Westminster. Now Westminster playing with those two high safeties. Typically, if you know they're gonna run the ball, you bring another one down in the box, but because they've had that success throwing the ball, it takes a man out of the box. Young takes a snap, fires towards the near side. It is caught at the 35, and quickly brought down the 31 yard line. It's Dagum Samuels, Dawson Brandt with the tackle. Almost a great pass breakup. Let's go defense! That's a completion, first down and 10 to go at the 31 of Sewanee of Westminster, Sewanee driving. Near side hash, Davidson to the left of Young. Young takes the snap, chest high, looks to his right, flushed out of the pocket, takes it himself up the middle of the field, to the 20, to the 15, and he is finally brought down, tripped up to the five yard line. Big play from Young using his mobility. First down and goal to go from the Westminster five. I'm surprised we haven't seen the legs of Young come in and play a factor quite yet. He is really athletic and really fast. Young in the shotgun, takes a snap handoff to Davidson up the middle, and he drives all the way to the two yard line. Undercut there. 12.36 to play in the first half. Sewanee looking for their third touchdown of the day. Yeah, good job by Westminster to stop him before the goal line, but now you got to bear down and make two stops. Jumbo package in for Sewanee. Jacorn Thomas is the quarterback. He takes the snap, tries to run it himself on the design quarterback keeper, but he's brought down at the one yard line. Interesting decision there, and they're going to keep the same package in, it looks like here. They might run the same play. Third down and one, Thomas loses the football. No, he gets it back on the snap. Oh, almost lost it, able to recollect, but he's not gonna get in the end zone, and Westminster stops him at the one yard line. They ran the same exact play twice in a row, and they are going to keep the offense out there. This crowd is getting loud. Fourth down and one. 
big chance for Westminster to hold Sewanee. 11.34 to play in the first half. Westminster did get a big stop against Rhodes last week. Eight on the play clock. And Andy McCollum is hot. He'll take a timeout as felt like his offense wasn't ready to get the play call and some confusion there. Andy McCollum, such an experienced head coach for Sewanee to have. He's been in the coaching game for over 40 years. He's had two coaching stints at Middle, Middle Tennessee State, including time as a head coach as they transitioned from the FCS to the FBS in 2000. And he spent several years at Georgia Tech, North Carolina State, UTEP, Baylor. He's been all over the country. Now he's back in the head coaching position now at Sewanee. Yeah, previously a defensive analyst with Buffalo and perhaps dialing up something big here on third and goal, fourth and goal from the one. Thomas, or now it's Young back in the game in the shotgun. He takes a snap, will take it himself, and he is undercut. He loses the football, ball of the turf at the one. Does Westminster have it? It honestly doesn't matter if they mark him short anyway. And it's gonna be Westminster football regardless. A big time stop from the Westminster defense. And they are hyped up as they stop Sewanee and stonewall them. At first down and goal to go, Sewanee cannot get into the end zone. What a massive stop by Westminster who had been dominated all drive in the trenches and suddenly they come out in the most important part of the drive and make a massive fourth down stop because that's just how football works sometimes. Uh, now it's dangerous territory for Westminster though because they got to get away from the end zone if they want to avoid a safety. Ball at their one yard line. I mean the football can't get any closer to the end zone. They come out in the I formation. Kern the fullback, Billups the running back. Zeibel under center, 11-13 to play in the first half. Sewanee leading Westminster 15-7. Zeibel under center will take it, and he'll try to take it himself on the sneak, and he's going to get dropped. They don't give Sewanee the safety. They say that he's marked down at the half-inch line. Yeah, good fight from Zeibel to stay out of his own end zone, and here a win on this drive would to just give your punting unit some... A little bit of room if you're the Blue Jays. Seibel looked like he was trying to hand it off to Kern. It, may have been, it might have been a read option, but he kept it himself. Still the ball right next to the end zone. Second down and 10. Seibel takes a snap, looks to the far side, trying to air it out, and it is picked off. It is picked off at the 28-yard line by Christian Webb. Great coverage as Westminster put it up for prayers. And the interception is made at the 27 yard line on the far side. Yeah, a bit of an arm punt there. You just get it out of your own end zone and that's one way to do it. But that sets up Sewanee inside the 30. That's not the greatest result if you're Westminster. And if you're just chucking it for an arm punt, you might have wanted to go a little bit further. Yeah. Far side hash, first down and 10 at the Westminster 27. Sawani the football, Jeremiah Young takes the snap, fires on the far side, and it is incomplete. No flags out for pass interference. Great coverage by Logan Blicken on Joe Cantrell, the senior. And that pass was going for the end zone on the far side, but it is broken up. And that brings up second down and 10 from the 27. The secondary of Westminster has played really well today. Young takes a snap handoff to Davidson, and he is stuffed before it can even get started at the line of scrimmage. Devin Miller and the Westminster defensive front continues to be a really strong unit in the run game. Third down and 11 to go. Ball with 28 on the far side hash. Talk about playing well today. Another guy, Devin Miller, has been flying to the football. Young in the shotgun, four wide receivers. He takes the chest high snap, looks over the middle, flush out of the pocket to his left, staying with his eyes downfield, but he's gonna get dropped at the 30 yard line. Dawson Brandt throws up the X, but he just made an X factor play, and that brings up a fourth down and 12 
from the 29 yard line. That was impressive sideline to sideline speed from Dawson Brand. And it looks like Swanee eventually will bring out a different unit. Yeah, we've seen the leg from Jack Satterfield. Yeah. Satterfield and he comes out to attempt this field goal. One for three on field goals last year. Alfred the holder, the snap is good, the hold is good, the kick has enough, no, it is wide to the right, it did have enough distance, but it just sails to the right. And the 40 plus yard field goal attempt is no good. And somehow after all of that, Mickey, so why does not get any points on the board? Yeah, they make a great job of keeping Westminster inside that goal line, getting good field position for their offense on the interception, but Coming right back out, a Westminster defense bears down and stalls them out in a very important moment in this game. And that was big because Westminster's defense had been on the field for a while before that. Bared down and made the goal line stand, but they came out perhaps a little bit tired. 9-17 to play in the first half. Sewanee leading Westminster 15-7. Westminster football at the Westminster 29 yard line. Zeibel takes a snap, turns around, hand off to Kern towards the near side and he is brought down quickly, but he does gain about three to bring up a second down and seven. Mark him down at the 32 and a half yard line. Kern is not a guy that I would want running full sprint at me. Oh my goodness, 225 pounds, six foot. You do not want to be in the danger zone of him and that is those Swanee defenders are a lot more bold than I am. Near side hash, second down and seven. Ball on the Westminster 33 yard line. I formation, Zeibel under center. He takes the snap, tosses it out far side to Billups. He runs it up the hash and then is met by the Sewanee defense. He stays on his feet though, still being pushed. Finally, they blow the play dead, but they give him forward progress to the 37 yard line. And that brings up a third down and manageable, about a third down third down and three. Yeah, and that's big. You get to set up the third and short, and that opens up the entire playbook. As expect Swanee to try and sell out to stop the run here. Officially third down and two on the far side hash. Billups the running back, Kern the fullback, I form. Zeibel turns around, hand off to Billups. Off left tackle, he has the first down and a little bit more. Dragging Sewanee defenders ahead to the 41 yard line. And the Westminster running game continues to build that momentum. Yeah, good job again by this offensive line getting a great push up into that defensive line and up into the secondary to create a big gain. First down and 10. Far side hash ball on the 41 of Westminster. Week number two, both teams looking for their first win. Zyball handoff to Billups, and he is tripped up, and he has a short pickup of about two. Mark him down at the 43-yard line. Now if you're Westminster, you need to find a little bit of explosiveness. You've been able to move the football very methodically throughout this game, but if you can start getting those 10, 15-yard gains, that's when you can really open up the offense and keep pace. Second down and eight to go on the 43. Seven minutes to play in the first half. Sewanee leading Westminster 15 to seven. Split backfield in the shotgun. Zeibel takes the snap, looks far side, and it is intercepted. Intercepted by Ethan Gillespie, and he's running down the far sideline all the way. Make that Tucker Kirk the linebacker for Sewanee for a Tigers touchdown. Tucker Kirk, the senior out of Georgia, picks off Zeibel for the second time today, and Sewanee takes a 21 to seven advantage. Yeah, not sure who Zeibel was looking for on the far sideline out there. Kirk was kind of in a land of his own, and he just looked up in his zone, sitting back thinking that he had it easy on that play, and, and he wasn't gonna have any excitement, but looked up and the football was fluttering right at him. So Jack Satterfield will attempt the extra point. And the kick is up and good. Sewanee leads 15, leads by 15, 22 to seven. 
And we'll take a break with 6.44 to play in the first half. You're tuned in to Westminster Football. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP Board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. After the pick six by Tucker Kirk, Sewanee leads 22 to seven, 6.44 to play in the first half. Jack Satterfield gets set to kick us off, right to left to Westminster. After Keegan Zeibel throws his second interception of the day, Brandon Perry initially marked for a fair catch, but he'll take it. No nope. whistles blown, Perry down the near sideline at 35-40, and he's pushed out to 41. Really, can't comprehend how that was not marked as a fair catch inside the 20 yard line. It appeared like Perry waved his hands for the fair catch, but just takes it across the field. And it's a really good return that will set up Westminster at the 41 yard line on the near side hash. Yeah, not sure how that one worked. Normally it's a clear signal for a fair catch and that was about as clear as day. And he just continued to run the football, no whistle. And hey, it worked out for the Blue Jays. So they take over on their own half, 41 yard line. I form, Zeibel turn around, hand off to Billups, and they didn't go very far that time, stuffed by the Sewanee defensive front. And they mark him back at the line of scrimmage, no gain on the play. Billups now with 11 rushing attempts, 46 yards on the ground. Yeah, good push by the defensive line to get into the backfield there, meet him early in the run, right at the line of scrimmage, and bring him down. Trace Hessel now in as the running back. Kendall Outlaw, the fullback. Second down and 10. Ball still, now they mark it at the 42. One yard pickup for Billups. Zeibel turn around, toss to Hessel to the far side. And he is bullying through Sewanee defenders before being dropped at the 45. Tough running for Hessel out on the edge. Yeah, they've had some success on the ground game today, but now in a third and medium, about third and six, you're gonna have to trust your quarterback, Keegan Zeibel, once again. Already two interceptions here in this first half. Five minutes and change to go with Sewanee leading 22 to seven. Only one for six on the game. Four wide receivers, Zeibel in the shotgun, Hessel to his right, third down and five from the 45. Snap taken, Zeibel spins, rolls out, and now he's in trouble again. And he finally gets rid of the football out of bounds to the far side as Quinn Johnson had a fistful of his jersey trying to rip him to the ground. Yeah, and good the, job to throw it away there, though. We saw Zeibel almost take a sack and almost cost his team a couple of points earlier in the game. So the Westminster drive stalls. Whistles blow from the referee crew. Wow. So they say the football as it was thrown out to the sideline. Said it was, the ball did not end up across the line of scrimmage, though, so that is intentional grounding. What confuses me about that call is that referee on the far side was all alone and he just decided to drop a flag about 30 seconds after the play. Interesting procedure there. Normally you see the referees huddle up and make sure it didn't in fact get back to the line. Fourth down and long, ball on the 25. Brant back to punt, Barnes to receive for Sewanee. Snap taken. Spiral from Brandt, taken by Barnes at the 30 yard line. He runs it towards the near side, makes one man miss, up the hash marks and he cuts back before being brought down at the 39 yard line. Late penalty flag again and the laundry sits at the 45 yard line on the Sewanee half. 
seen some dirty laundry here to begin today, and it's holding on the receiving team. It's on Sawani. So that moves back their starting point. And that'll help Westminster out, try and bury them a little bit deeper into their own territory, a defense that has given up 129 passing yards to Young today. It'll be interesting to see how they respond once again. They've been off the field for a while. And those yards coming mostly from two plays, one connection for a touchdown to Cooper Alford and one to Dyer Barnes. But Sawani was stuffed on their last drive all the way at the one yard line. 22 to seven, Sawani leads Westminster. 4.54 to play in the first half. First down and 10 for the Tigers at the 29 yard line. Snap taken by Young, hand off to Davidson, the near side, and he is undercut and brought down for a one yard pickup. Mark him at the 30 yard line. That good defense to get wide there. He was running off tackle and just good pursuit from Westminster. They've improved a lot defensively from last week. Davidson, a freshman out of Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. Shotgun. Young takes a snap on second down and nine. He fires a hot one over the middle of the field, and Dawson Brandt able to get his paw up and knock it away. But he's shaking his hand as that football came out hot from <laughs> Jeremiah Young, and that brings up a third down and nine. He wasn't far away from Young either, so he got his hands on it right as it came out of the hands of Young. And third down and nine from the 30. Young in the shotgun takes the snap, hand off to Davidson up the middle. He has some room to the 35 and towards the 40, has the first down a bit more. Mark him down at the 42. The Westminster defense not expecting inside run that time, a little zone play. And Sawani able to drive to the 42 and a first down. Yeah, just had a little bit too little playing off, playing a little conservative on third and medium, expecting the pass, didn't have anybody in the box. 4.02 to play in the first half. And Sawani takes a little bit of time now. Nine on the play clock. 11 personnel for Sawani. Young takes the snap handoff to Davidson up the middle again, and he drives forward for a medium pickup to the 46 yard line on the Sawani half. And Brant getting up and sharing some pleasant words with Max Grumbles, the right guard. This game is getting physical. We didn't really see it last week, but both teams getting a little bit chippy. They've been chippy since the opening kickoff. So second down and six, ball on the Sewanee 46. In the middle of the field on the Blue Jay logo. Same 11 personnel. Young in the shotgun, takes the chest high snap, rolls out to his right, fires, and it is caught at the 49 on the other half of the field. It's caught by Davis Sane, the freshman out of Jackson, Tennessee. Haven't seen too much of Sane today, nor this season, but he gets a quick grab, brings up a third down and one, quickly to the line comes Sewanee on the far side hash. 49 yard line, handoff to Davidson, up the middle, makes another guy miss, and then is Brought down, tripped up, but has the first down, and he gets to the 46-yard line. Able to make a quick jump cut there to stay on his feet and get the first down for Sewanee. Now in the Westminster half, ball in the 46. I like getting to the line quick there if you're Sewanee. Try and catch him off guard a little bit. Four wide receivers for Sewanee. First down and 10. Young takes a snap, looks near side complete to Samuels to the 50 and he slips up, but stays on his feet to the 40. Oh, they mark him down. Dylan Farrell gets credited with the tackle as they say Samuels' knee hit the turf at the 46, so no gain on the play. Almost a miraculous save for him to stay up. Yeah, that might have gone for a touchdown if he was able to break a tackle, make a man miss, but unfortunately that right knee going to the ground, he tried to plant a little bit too hard and the cleat just gave way. Second down and 10, under two minutes to play in the first half. Sewanee leading Westminster 22 to seven. Young takes the shotgun snap, handoff to Robinson up the middle and he breaks one tackle then gets through another before driving to the 38 yard line. 
Walker Robinson gives a good pickup for Sawani, and that brings up a third down and two at the Westminster 38 yard line. This would be massive if the Blue Jays can come up with a stop here. He can't. Sawani is in the field goal range, and you're in danger of going down three possessions into halftime. Young takes the snap, handoff to Robinson up the middle, driving through a Blue Jay towards the line to gain, but they mark him down at the 37, and he is short, so that brings up a fourth down and one. Big time stop from the Westminster defense on third down. They're gonna go. But it appears Sawani will go for it here on fourth down. Another chance for Westminster to get off the field. A minute remaining in the first half. Walker Robinson to the left of Young. 11 personnel with Elf with the tight end to the left of the offensive line. Far side hash, head up Robinson. He's blown up in the backfield. Dawson Brandt makes another big stop for the Blue Jays defense. Dawson Brandt with the play of the year so far for the Blue Jays exploding into the backfield. We saw him throughout this game getting really physical with Sawani and that was controlled aggression at its finest, exploding into the backfield and laying out the runner. Walker Robinson planted to the turf at the 41. Westminster's offense takes over, 47 and a half seconds to play in the first half. They have two timeouts, ball on the far side hash on their own half of the field. Zybo the shotgun, he takes the snap, looks to his right, and he is going to get flushed through the pocket, stays on his feet to the left, and then is eventually going to be dragged down for a sack. Flag comes out late, ball came out too. Zybo was down though before the ball came out, just, a, just an abysmal play for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Zeibel keeps trying to run out of the pocket before it's fully collapsing in on himself. That was another instance where he could have stepped up and bought himself a couple extra seconds. And that just, some of that comes from the inexperience for Zeibel holding on Westminster. So that moves him back. And we'll see if Westminster is content just to end the half at this point. This doesn't seem like the Westminster wide receivers are getting much separation for Zeibel either to help him out. No, and the offensive line hasn't had too much success. And you can accredit his eagerness to escape the pocket to the pressure that he has faced today. Almost anticipating that when it might not be there. Westminster eye formation. Ball at 29. First down at 22. A turnaround handoff to Hessel. And he's going to get dragged backwards, gain of two. And we'll see if that is indeed the end of the half. And it appears that will be Westminster able to get some big time stops defensively on Sewanee, but it's the two big plays for the Tigers. The throw to Dyer Barnes down the field, a 60 yard connection. And then the pick six for Tucker Kirk that has given the Tigers this 22 to seven lead over Westminster. We yeah, it's the explosive plays that have come back to bite the Blue Jays in this first half. That's kind of what killed them last week as well, but unfortunate that they are down this much. But at the same time, you have some positives. That run game did seem to work from time to time. You just got to open it up with the pass game. Dante Phillips getting the first touchdown of the year for Westminster, and that gives them seven. And your score is Sewanee 22, Westminster seven. We'll take a halftime break and be back with the second half of action. You're tuned in to Westminster Blue Jays football. Financial planning is one of those careers that viewers you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP board's learning outcomes here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, 
helps to build a better future.
Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future.
Second half getting set to get underway as Westminster will kick it off right to left to Sewanee who leads 22 to seven after the big plays through the air and the pick six have given them this advantage. Hugo Hovera getting set to put his foot in the football. Kaysen Holder back to receive. It's a short spiral kick that's returned at the 22 on the near side. He runs up the middle of the field, down the right hash, and then is tripped up at the 42-yard line. A really nice return Holder for the junior out of Warren County High School. And that's where Sewanee will start their drive on their own half at the 42 41 yard line is where it is officially. Yeah, and that was a first half where Westminster was really killed by big plays down the field. If they're able to limit those into the second half, they were, for the most part, playing extremely well defensively and pretty well offensively as well. Young in the shotgun, handoff to Davidson off the left side. He breaks into the linebacker and secondary of Westminster, and they mark him down at the 50. Nine yard gain, second down and one for Sewanee. Yeah, good start there. Getting that ground game going, opens up the rest of your playbook. Davidson with 26 yards rushing in the first half. Young in the shotgun takes the chest high snap, fires it out near side to Davidson out of the backfield, and he breaks one tackle, but then is spun down by Devin Miller for a loss, a pretty big one at that. Mark him down at the 47. Yeah, it could have been bigger if that was able to complete the first tackle. Got to wrap up, got to use those hands to swing him down. Third down and three. It's David Fenton on the initial contact. Ball to 48. Young in the shotgun, four wide receivers. Davidson to his right. Young takes the snap, looks to his left, fires quickly, and it is caught by Samuels at the 40. Ricky Elias in coverage, but he could not be tough enough Tough enough, and it's Samuels on the slant that gives Sewanee the first down. They're into Westminster territory on the 40. He has got such great velocity behind his balls. First down and 10. Young handoff Davidson up the middle, but Dawson Brandt is there once again. He has been absolutely stuffing the Sewanee run game when he gets his hands on the running back. There is a penalty flag out. It's on the far sideline, so it's not after the play. <laughs> Westminster is moving back like the penalty is on them. And the referees are looking at Westminster's sideline almost like they're <laughs> a substitution violation against the Blue Jays. That's pretty backbreaking. Darvin Fowler gets accredited with that substitution penalty. That moves Sewanee up to the 35. It's unfortunate. First down and five. In the middle of the field, Young takes the snap, looks to his right, and fires that direction, lofting it towards the five, and it is incomplete. Soaring up into the air was Joe Cantrell, but great coverage by Connor Vaughn, who started the first half because Jeffrey Banks was out of the game against Rhodes in the second half with a targeting penalty, but it seems like John Welty has some trust in him to keep him in the game instead of Banks, and he had really nice coverage there on Cantrell. It falls incomplete at the five yard line. He was playing the ball the entire time, just tracking it all the way. That's exactly what you're supposed to do as a corner. And it looks like there's another flag on the play. Wow. Sportsmanlike conduct against the offense and defense. So offsetting penalties, the unsportsmanlike conduct. We saw at the end of the first half, the game get a little more chippy. It's been very physical interior running and the Offensive and defensive line certainly getting into it a little bit at this point. That brings up second down and five. Ball to the 35. Still in the middle of the field. 11 personnel for Sewanee. Young in the shotgun takes a snap. Hand off to Davidson on the left side. Runs up the left hash. Bounces towards the middle. And he has the first down and more all the way to the Westminster 22-yard line. Has a great explosive run. Found the cutback lane and hit it extremely hard. And... Sewanee now driving. They sub in Lucas White to be the left guard. 
First down and 10 at the 22. 12.51 left to play in the third quarter. Young takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looks to his right and fires, incomplete. It falls out of bounds at the five. He was looking for Cantrell who slipped. Yeah, coming out of the hitch route, he looks like he planted just a little bit too hard as cleats gave way and it's a big incompletion on first down because now you're behind where you wanna be. You're behind schedule if you're the Tigers. So Wani leading 22 to seven over Westminster. They're driving second down and 10, ball to 22. Young takes a snap, handoff. Yeah. Davidson gets blown up. Devin Miller in there to plant him at the 29 yard line. That's a seven yard loss created by Devin Miller who's had a couple of those TFLs today. Devin Miller has been flying to the ball all game long from the jump. He has had his fingerprints all over this football game. Third down and 15, they mark him down to 27. Young takes the snap, looks over the middle, and then sets up the halfback screen. Davidson on the far side, he breaks one tackle and then is brought down at the 20, make that the 19 yard line. Great job to swarm by the Blue Jays and now the field goal unit will trot onto the field. Fourth down in six or so. Satterfield out with Alfred the holder. This will be a 36 yard attempt. Satterfield the lefty, the low snap, the hold is down, the kick is no good. Second missed kick of the day for Satterfield. Just a bad exchange from the snap to the hold. It was a low snap and Satterfield unable to put it through. So the score remains Sewanee 22, Westminster seven. Yeah, sometimes the process is just a little bit off and he pushed it far right. The laces might've been out just a little bit there on the exchange and that was just disastrous from the beginning. And now Westminster comes out. It's still a two possession game. You can get some points on this drive. You're feeling really good about your chances. 11.40 to play in the third quarter. Sewanee leading 22 to seven over Westminster. Who has the football now. Ball at 19 yard line on the Westminster half. Middle of the field, Kern, the running back to the right of Zeibel in the shotgun. Zeibel takes the snap, looks far side and he completes it and Trey King is quickly brought down by a group of Tigers. Maybe a pickup of one yard. That was a great job to blow up that screen. Christian Webb in on that play, just exploding into the backfield. You, you think Swanee was fooled on that? I don't think that they were fooled by that screen pass at all. So that brings up a second down and nine as Zeibel in the Westminster air game has just not found a positive connection yet this season. Split backfield in the pistol is Zeibel. He takes the snap, hand off to Hessel, and he is able to drive forward, stay on his feet, and stumble ahead across the 30-yard line, mark him down to 31. First down, Westminster. That is great contact balance from Hessel, who took a big hit and was getting dragged at, but continued to stay on his feet after stumbling a bit. Great run up the middle there, and continually good pushes from this offensive line. Same formation, Campbell, the wide receiver to the near side. Perry to the far side, ball to 31. First down, and a run to Hessel, and he barrels into the right side of his offensive line before getting brought down at the 33-yard line on the far side. Ball on the far side, Hash. They give him the 34, so second down and seven to go. Same split formation, Kern to the left is Zeibel, Hessel behind him. Zeibel takes the snap, handoff to Hessel up the middle, and he is spun forward. Quinn Johnson, the Sewanee linebacker, helped out Hessel by spinning him to the 40 yard line, and that brings up a third down and one. More tough running from Hessel. He was a little bit quieter in that first half, 10 carries for 37 yards, wasn't ripping off huge yards, but continues to get some carries into the second half. Now Perry, the wide receiver on the near side as him and Campbell flip. Third down and one, nine and a half to tick here in the third quarter. Zeibel, handoff to Hessel up the middle and he is trying 
and putting all his effort to dive forward towards the line to gain. He didn't look like he got it. Nope, they're signaling a first down. That would be a generous call from the far side referee. It appears he saw Hessel get the football to the 41 yard line, though his body was still behind it as he just reached forward. Almost a nice stop for the Sewanee defense, but a fresh set of downs. Sewanee does lead 22 to seven. Westminster football on their own half. I formation, Zeibel, handoff to Hessel, and he is tripped up quickly, but he picks up one. This heavy dose of running game has really given Westminster the advantage in time of possession. In that first half, it was 19 minutes to a little under 11 minutes for Swanee. Tucker Kirk and Micah Villarini have done a really nice job, the linebackers for Sewanee, of keeping the runs short here on this Westminster drive. Second down and nine, far side hash ball, the 42, Westminster driving right to left. I formation, Zeibel turns around, handoff to Hessel, bounces to the left side, and he's driving for he loses his head, helmet, and then is brought down hard at the 44 yard line. That's a dangerous play. Yeah, the penalty flag is out. I have seen the penalty where if a guy loses his helmet, he's not supposed to play on, but I doubt that's the penalty called this time. I Maybe unnecessary is. roughness. Because the minute that helmet comes off on the ball carrier, that play is dead. You can't continue to bring him down. But at the same time, how would those defenders know? Ooh, Andy McCollum, head coach of Sewanee in disbelief. Couple of penalties here, and a generous call there on first down earlier in this drive will move Westminster's offense ahead. Move them all the way into Sewanee territory. Ball at the 41 yard line on the left hash. That must have been how he lost his helmet. Dante Billups gave Westminster their first touchdown of 2023, and Westminster driving looking for another. I formation, Zeibel under center. Swanee shows blitz, handoff to Billups up the middle, and he is quickly met by the Sewanee defensive line. They grabbed his legs, and then they eventually pushed him down. No gain on the play, brings up a second down and 10. Yeah, Billups had some good success in that first half, 47 yards on 10 carries, averaging just over four yards a carry. Continuing to get heavy dosage of running game from the Blue Jays offense. He ran it 29 times in that first half. Campbell, the receiver to the near side. Trey King to the far side. I formation. Zeibel under center. Ball in the 41, middle of the field. Handoff, Billups took the right side and he drives ahead, puts his helmet down. Mark him down at the 41. That brings up a third down and eight. Yeah, that, on that play, Swanee was showing a gap pressure and they brought it, and it's so hard to run between the tackles if those linebackers are blitzing through that A gap. And there the result was only a yard or two. Third down and eight, ball on the Westminster 39 yard line. Under seven to play in the third quarter. Westminster trail Sewanee, seven to 22. Split backfield in the pistol is Zeibel. Takes the snap, looks to his left, towards the middle of the field, and then is dropped. The Sewanee pass rush heated up. Desmond Gilbert, one of the man in there, and he celebrates with his teammate Michael Showalter, and that stalls the Westminster drive. Another sack, fourth of the game for Sewanee. Their pass rush has been potent today, despite the inability to really stop this Westminster run game. All the Westminster 49, Dawson Brandt stands at the 36. He will fake the punt, hold on to it, run it down the far side. He has some space to the 35. He hurls the man, first down Westminster. Dawson Brandt had a little trouble with the snap initially and then has took it himself. Mark him down the 30 yard line. Dawson Brandt, easily the MVP of the Blue Jays today. What an unbelievable play from Brandt. Hey, punters are people too, aren't they? Going down the sideline and hurtling a man going down. That was an unbelievable play and a very aggressive play call. I don't know if it 
was even designed with how fast Swanee got into the backfield. Split pistol, ball to 28, fresh set of downs for Westminster as they convert to fourth down and long. Ball in the right hash. And penalty flags come out. And this looks like it might be a delay of game against Westminster, and that is what it is. Well, Dawson Brandt isn't your typical punter. Normally a linebacker, so he shows that athleticism converting that first down, that fourth down for a first down. And now that penalty backs up Westminster. First down and 15 from the 33 in Sewanee territory. Fake handoff. Zeibel quickly delivers to King, and he is quickly met at the 29-yard line by Kaysen Holder. Short pickup for the Blue Jays, and that brings up a second down and 11. Only the second completion of the game for Zeibel. Trey King, a senior out of Fort Worth, Texas. Westminster goes back to the I formation. Kern, the fullback. Hessel, the halfback behind him. Turn around, handoff to Hessel. He bounces outside to the 20, to the 15, 10, to the 5, and he's brought down. Down the far side, eventually brought down by Caleb C, but not before Westminster has first down and goal from the two-yard line. There's the explosiveness that we needed to see from this Westminster team into the second half. They hadn't been able to get those chunk plays, and that might have been the longest offensive play they've had in this football game. Officially, it's the four yard line. Far side hash. Far the fake punt. Westminster looking for their second touchdown of the season. Full backfield behind Zeibel. Under center, he takes the snap. Handoff to Billups. Up the middle, he plunges forward. Maybe picked up one. They mark him at the three. And that brings up a second down and goal. Yeah, I like it. Keep it between the tackles. Stick what has gotten you to this point and what you've been successful at in this game. Try and finish off this drive. We saw them convert on a goal to go situation earlier in the game to get their seven points that they have right now. Ian Bach, the tight end to the left of the offensive line, Westerfield to the right, middle of the field, second down and three from the three yard line. Zeibel fakes the handoff, play action, fires to the far side, or the near side rather, and it's incomplete. Too far for Ian Bach out of the back of the end zone. Number 87. I like it, you, you pull it back and a play action and credit Swanee's defense, they were not fooled right there. And now you're gonna have to go a, what feels like a mile and a half, that's only three yards. 3.33 to play in the third quarter. Sewanee leading Westminster 22 to seven. Blue Jays looking to convert. I formation, Zeibel turns around, handoff, Hessel up the middle, driving behind his offensive line. Touchdown, Westminster. Yeah! Blue Jays on the board again. <laughs> Keep it between the tackles and continue to have success offensively. Great run up the middle from Hessel, who continues to show off his power. Our score now, Sewanee 22, Westminster 13. Hugo Hover getting set to attempt the extra point. Brandon Perry, the holder. The hold is good. The kick is good. Signs of life here for the Westminster offense. And with 3.31 to play in the third quarter, they trail Suwani by just eight. We'll be back with more Westminster Blue Jays football. Nine, eight, six, one, two, nine, four. You finish your degree faster. It's 100% online so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. Out of the break, Westminster puts seven more points on the board. They still trail Sewanee 22 to 14. 
Hugo Hover sends away the kick. And Kaysen Holder takes it at the 11-yard line on the near side. Now moves up the middle of the field to the 30, breaks one tackle, stays on his feet to the 45-50, and it's a big-time tackle to save a potential touchdown by Cooper Thompson. I mean, he's, a, he's one of the backup kickers, and he just saved a touchdown possibly for Sewanee. Ball on the 49, and that's where the Tigers take over with 323 to play in the third quarter. He might be the backup kicker, but he flies out of what would have been Let's a free go, safety go, go. position on the defense. It was a great play. Sewanee takes over at the 49-yard line of Westminster. Jeremiah Young handoff to Jacorin Thomas, and he is quickly dragged down in the backfield by Dylan Farrell. Three-yard loss. Interesting to see Jacorin Thomas let's get a go, handoff Marcus, that time. He's go, the backup go, go. quarterback, but he's so mobile. Kind of like how South Carolina uses Decorian Joyner. Kind of use him in interesting ways. And so that brings up a second down and 13, under three to play in the third quarter. Yeah, the Blue Jays continue to swarm the football, especially in this run game. They've done a great job of getting off their blocks. Second down and 13, far side hash, ball in the Sewanee 48. Toss out to Thomas up the middle of the field. He is quickly stopped. I don't know if Jojo Lozano was initially intending to make the tackle there, but he was at the right place at the right time. And he quickly stops Thomas again. Third down and 11 upcoming for Sewanee. Ball at the 50 yard line, right on the middle of the field. Great job by Lozano exploding into the backfield and making the stop. And that sets up a massive, massive third down at this point in the game. Watch number 10! Westminster with all the momentum, but Thomas to the right of Young. Man in motion, Samuels left to right. Four wide receivers in the formation. Young steps back, drops back, pressured by Miller, rolls to his right, keeps his eyes downfield, floats it, and it is caught by Samuels at the 27. A diving grab. Jacob Samuels out of Nashville continues to impress everybody today and a really nice grab to the near side and it gives Sewanee a fresh set of downs in Westminster territory and a penalty flag on the Blue Jays and likely will be declined but still a big play for Sewanee. That was an unbelievable job by Jeremiah Young to extend the play, escape the pocket and keep it going and keep his eyes downfield and find his man for a great throw on first down. Young a little shaken up. He's on the sideline getting his right leg looked at. Jacorin wow. Thomas in the game. They do accept the penalty. Ball on the 23 yard line, near side hash. And whistles blow from the referees. Uh, they move the ball even, yeah, they move the ball even further to the 14 yard line. Ball on the right hash, Thomas, handoff, Robinson, and he is going to get away from one Blue Jay and then move ahead, diving forward to the 10 yard line. Four yard gain, and a minute and a half remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, and just a heads up to the audiences at home, the score, the time on your screen that you're seeing right now is unofficial. It does not exactly match the scoreboard, just get there to give you an idea of where we're at. Thomas takes the snap, takes it himself up the middle, and then is dragging forward behind him. Back first to the five-yard line. And let's see if they give him the first down or not. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Third and one coming up. They do not. Third and one, massive play coming up. Again, Sewanee leading Westminster 22 to 14. Big third down pass from Young to Dagum Samuels is what has driven Sawani downfield. It's a big, this would be a big stop if you're Westminster, especially given where Sawani's kicking game has been today. Robinson to the left of Thomas, the shotgun. Samuels in motion right to left. They fake the handoff to him and give it to Robinson, and he is brought down the backfield. Quickly he was met by Darvin Fowler. The freshman out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. And it doesn't look like they're gonna put Satterfield out there to kick a field goal. One of the biggest plays of the game to this point, and it might take us to the fourth quarter. This will be a big time play for the Westminster defense again. They have forced two turnover on downs 
of Suwanee. And we'll have the fourth down coming up out of this break. Suwanee leads Westminster 22 to 14. Financial planning is one of those careers that favors you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in a huge fourth down coming up for the Westminster defense, who's already forced two turnovers on downs of Sewanee. But this time, Sewanee will send out Jack Satterfield and the kicking game to attempt this short field goal. About a 25 yarder, and it is a high one that is through the uprights and good. And that puts Sewanee up 25 to 14, quickly out of that third quarter to fourth quarter break, but the Westminster defense holds after the big conversion from Jeremiah Young to Dagum Samuels. But it will be an interesting note to see what Young's health looks like going forward as he missed the rest of that drive. Yeah, it is big given how well oiled this Swanee offense has looked today, especially through the air. He had a ton of success, especially on deep balls down the field. He found Barnes for that 60 yard touchdown earlier in the game. So he is what this Suwannee offense likes to run through, big arm. And that would be big if he was to miss the rest of this game. But still, if you're Westminster, you need at least two possessions to end in scores. Here's that they taped up Young's ankle down there on the Suwannee sideline but he is hobbling around. Well, we'll see if he can return to the game. Before that, it should be the Westminster offense taking the field as Satterfield kicks us off right to left. End over end kick that is taken at the 15 yard line by the Blue Jay down the left hash. And it is Blue Jays quickly met. There you go, Cal! After the trouble that they had last week, especially returning kicks, this year, it's this week, it has been very, very clean. Got a couple of good returns in that first half as well. The Westminster offense returns to the field after the rushing touchdown by Trace Hessel. 14-44 remaining in the ball game. Sewanee leading the Blue Jays 25 to 14. Ball on the 28 yard line, far side hash, handoff. And Billups will take it, and he might have lost the football, but he hangs on to it. The ball was getting ripped at, and he gains two to the 31 yard line. Clock ticks down as Westminster already putting in a much better performance than what they gave against Rhodes last week. I formation. Kern the running back and the handoff goes to him up the middle and very little room to get to. The far side official gives a generous spot again. This time they mark him down at the 34 yard line in Westminster territory on the far side hash. It's interesting because Westminster, the way they have had success offensively today has not been the way you would like to come back in games. You need to maximize the amount of time that you have to possess the ball. And running the football tends to bleed that clock a lot. And Zeibel's already thrown two picks today, including a pick six. Perry, the wide receiver on the near side, split backfield pistol. Zeibel takes the chest high snap, looks near side. Now rolls for pressure, and he does not get rid of the football. He is sacked all the way back at the 15 yard line by Tucker Kirk who has had a really nice day for the Sewanee Tigers defensively. Yeah, just a disastrous play. You had one Blue Jay holding a defender, and then on the other side, a couple of missed assignments along the offensive line. It's been a rough day. A rough day for Zeibel trying to throw the football. Grant stands at his own two yard line. And he will take the snap. 
kick it away, a spiral taken by Barnes at the 46 on the other side of the field. And he will draw it to the near side, and he'll miss one blocker, and then he cuts back to the middle of the field towards it, and then is brought down at the 31-yard line into Westminster territory. Dyer Barnes has had a really nice day as well. And now a flag is out. That might have been for a block in the back at the 48-yard line of Westminster. Yeah, the Swanee head coaching unit, Swanee coaches do not look happy about it. If this is a block in the back. That is a huge break for the Jays. And definitely Sewanee has shot themselves in the foot with those yeah. penalties more often than not. It's really helped out Westminster. Oh, yeah! It's 10 from the spot of the foul. So that will drive them all the way back into their own territory after what could have been an electrifying return. And it is not Jeremiah Young out to quarterback this Sewanee offense. It's Jaden Bragg, the freshman out of Smyrna, Tennessee. Yeah, Bragg standing at 5'10", 175. This is a big spot to be thrown into. First down and 10 for the 42, and before the play can start, flags are out. It looks like somebody on the offensive line may have moved early. And that moves back Sawani oh, yeah! a bit more. Oh, yeah! Full start on number 64, Lucas White. Repeat first down. So Lucas White. Jumps a little bit early. First down and 15, now to 37. Sewanee moving right to left. Ball on the left hash. Bragg takes the snap. Hand off to Walker Robinson, and he cuts to the right, right into the middle of the congestion. And he did not gain anything. Back to the line of scrimmage on the 37. Sewanee leading Westminster 25 to 14, 12 23, and ticking in the ball game. Yeah, and if you're Westminster, you want to put as much pressure on Bragg as humanly possible. This is the guy that, if he beats you, you're okay with it because it's the backup quarterback. Four wide receivers for Bragg in the shotgun. He takes the snap, looks over the middle, completes it to Samuels. He has it, maybe enough for a first down. He's brought down at the 43 yard line. Third and nine. Or rather, he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Just a little bit forward of that. Brings up a third down and nine. Ball on the 43, left hash, quickly up to the line. Bragg gets Westminster to jump off sides. Free play, but they blow it dead before Cantrell can make the grab at the 30-yard line into Westminster territory. As him and Vaughn battle for the football. They should have let the play go. Most of the time you allow an off sides to go, but they uh, blow the play dead. It looks like a Westminster defender may have made contact with an offensive lineman as they jumped off sides. That would immediately be blown dead if they did do that. Yeah, so off sides and that will make it a more manageable third down for Swanee who, that is a big break and it Takes a lot of pressure off Jaden Bragg, the freshman quarterback. You're good, Mike! Yeah. First You're snaps okay, Mike. on the road, your team looking to the next make play. this win. He's in the shotgun, ball on the 47 on the left hash. Four wide receivers, Robinson to the left of Bragg. He takes the snap, looks to his left. Flushed out of the pocket, now looks downfield and it's overthrown for Samuels. He was looking for him at the 35 yard line. But maybe Bragg is a little bit too juiced up coming into the game. And like a relief pitcher, he just didn't quite fit that one in. Yeah, Samuel had a ton of separation and was streaking ball! down the middle of the field. Just couldn't get it into it. Overthrown a little bit. Fourth down and five. Punt unit out for Sewanee. Satterfield stands at his own 34. Brandon Perry. Back to receive for Westminster at the 15. Satterfield takes a snap, spiraling, wobbling, punts. 
to the 17, it drops and then it takes a Westminster pounce and it's, and it's collected by one of the up men, one of the gunners for Westminster. And they mark him down at the 15 yard line, or rather the officially the 13. That is a dangerous, dangerous play, something that you never want to see out of your return unit. That he makes contact with that and is unable to pick it up cleanly. That is a fumble and a live ball that Swanee can jump on and get the ball deep in their territory. Becker Dunscombe thankfully was able to hang on to it. 11.20 to play in the ball game. Sewanee leading Westminster 25 to 14. Ball in the 18 yard line, right hash. Westminster with the football. Zeibel in the pistol, takes the snap and keeps it himself, moves near side, makes one man miss, and then is brought down the 25 yard oh, yeah, line by Micah Mulraney. On the read option, one of the few times we've seen Zeibel hang on to it for himself. Yeah, that's something that we saw a lot last week Try and get that option game going, something that has not been run by this offense so far today. Perry, the wide receiver, the near side. Westerfield, the tight end to the right of the offensive line. Split pistol again. Second down, handoff, and Hessel stays on his feet through one tackler and then is eventually met. He has the first down on that second down and three. He gains five to the 30. Run! So fresh set of downs for the Westminster offense that continues to use the run game. And continuing to run between the tackles, Hessel showing off his toughness, something that he's done all game. Hessel, 18 rushes, 87 yards, and a touchdown. Split backfield again, and the pistol. Ball in the 30 on the near side hash. Toss to the far side to Hessel down the left hash and he is brought down after a short pickup of three. Mark him down to the 33 yard line. Eventually, if you're Westminster now ticking below 10 minutes left in this game, you're gonna have to try and take a shot. You have to have two possessions. You can't continue to take your time and give Swanee the ball back with two minutes left. Second down and seven yards to go for the Westminster offense. Ball on their own 33, middle of the field. Seven on the play clock. Zeibel the pistol, takes the belt tie snap. Play action and he throws to the far side, incomplete, looking for Campbell at the 36. Just looking for a quick hitter on the slant and just not enough of a connection between him and Campbell. Yeah, just a little bit of a low throw there and now a third and seven coming up, something that they have to convert on. They haven't been able to do it all game because of their inability to throw the ball. 45% on third down are the Blue Jays today. Split backfield, third down and seven from the 33. Zeibel in the pistol. He takes the snap, looks near side. He's gonna get rushed quickly and he is dropped all the way back to the 15 yard line. The Sewanee dip defense picks up another sack. And this time it's Isaiah Copeland, the freshman out of Jefferson, Georgia. That is a massive stop by Sewanee who gets their defense off the field, will bring out the offensive unit with a chance to try and milk this clock all the way down. Under nine to play. Westminster still trailing by nine, 25, or eight to nine, 25 to 14. Grant gets the spiral punt, bounce at the 50 and into the hands of Barnes, flag is out. And Barnes is brought down at the 48. See what this laundry is about. Just gotta stay aggressive defensively, try and force a turnover. Make a play, get your offense back on the field, try and cut into this lead. We'll pick up the flag. The flag is picked up, there's no foul. With 8.39 to play in this one, Sewanee with the football, leading Westminster 25 to 14 here in Fulton. It's been an absolute beautiful day for football. But the backup quarterback, Jaden Bragg in the game for Jeremiah Young, and he sits in the shotgun. 
He'll take the snap, hand off to Robinson towards the near side. Makes one man miss up to the 40. He's dragging a Blue Jay, and he falls ahead to the 38-yard line in Westminster territory. That's an aspect of this offense that hasn't really gotten going quite yet. It's the run game, and they can get that going. It's going to be a long one. On the near side hash, Sawani moving right to left. Ball to 38. Alfred the tight end, split out left of the offensive line. Bragg takes a snap, looks far side, then makes one man miss, and takes it himself up to the 35. He evaded the rushing defender and then takes it himself for a short pickup. Mark him down at the 36. It's an impressive play from the freshman who's able to evade a couple of tacklers, get out of the pocket, step up and get something out of a play that could have ended in disaster. Second down and seven. Bragg takes the high snap. Rolls to his right, fires to the far side, complete to Cantrell, makes another man miss, and then is brought down to towards the 25, and that's where they mark him down at the far sideline. Completion from Bragg to Cantrell. And that's a good job by Cantrell to stay in bounds, go down, just give himself up on that far sideline. Well, on the far side hash. Barnes, Alford, and Samuels, the receivers to the near side. Cantrell alone to the far side. Shotgun snap to Bragg. He fires to the near side as Samuels on the screen to the 20. And a penalty flag is out. Cantrell loses the football out of bounds. That could have been really dangerous for Sewanee, but this play will come back. They will there call a holding go, on the near side, and it appears it will be on Alford. Yeah, it was one of the more obvious holding you'll ever see. He was way out of the frame of the defender. And that is indeed what it is. This play will come back. There we go! Seven minutes, 10 seconds remaining. Westminster's defense has been backed up multiple times, but they have made multiple stops. And they have only allowed 15 of Sewanee's points, or rather 18 of Sewanee's points. One of the touchdowns was a pick six by Tucker Kirk. First down and 16, ball on the 25. On the left hash, Bragg takes the snap, looks over the middle of the field and fires near side, complete to Robinson, but he can't get his feet in, feet in bounds. Marked out at the 28 yard line. They're trusting him. They're trusting Bragg in these drop back situations. Freshman, a to take these straight drop backs, read a defense, get off his first read, and he's done a really good job so far. John Welty and Elbert Kern having some words with that official on the far side as an eligible, ineligible man downfield against Westminster. They Other against Sewanee, Samuel. Or excuse me, against Sewanee, yes. Let's go, defense! Ball on a 31 in Westminster territory. Near side hash, second down and 16. Yeah, Robinson to the left of Bragg. Barnes alone to the near side as the receiver. Hand off to Robinson, off to the right, and he bounces up the hash, up the middle of the field as well. Breaks a tackle, breaks another into the open field. Five, touchdown for Robinson. And that really breaks open the game. A dagger possibly here for Sewanee. What a great open field run, cutting it back, breaking a couple of tackles, and that might be the nail in the coffin. Walker Robinson, the sophomore out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, puts Sewanee up 31 to 14 with 6.45 to play. Sewanee moves out of that Two-point conversion look back into an extra point attempt. Kick by Satterfield is up, and it is good. The kick is up and good. So Sewanee has taken a commanding lead, and they have the advantage, 32 to 14 over Westminster. I'll take a break and be back. You're watching Westminster Blue Jays football. Financial planning and finance to father your career. 
Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major. Welcome you back to Fulton, Missouri, where Sewanee has taken a commanding 32 to 14 over Westminster. 6.45 to play in the ball game here in week two. Both these teams looking for their first victory of 2023. It was Sewanee who dominated Westminster a year ago in Sewanee, Tennessee. End over end kickoff and taken by the Blue Jay up to near hash. She makes a one man miss and it's, tries to stiff arm another before being struck down at the 25 yard line. Flag is out as Callan Topliff on the return that time, or make that Mikkel McFarland. Back. This will drive Westminster back further. A block in the back will set them up deep in their own territory. And like you continually talk about, they'll need some kind of big pass play. They want any shot of making this one interesting. But a much better performance this week than yeah. last week. And the offense got a little bit going with the run game. It's hard to get it worse than last week. But this week they've come out, they've played physical, they've played fast, they've swarmed the ball. Especially, I like the line play on both sides of the ball from Westminster. So Peyton Byerly comes in to replace oh. Keegan Zeibel under center and immediately has a mishandled snap. Yes. Thankfully, Westminster falls back on it, back at the line of scrimmage, second down and 10 from the 15-yard line after the block and the back penalty on the return moved them back. Early a junior from Springfield, Missouri. 459 yards passing last year, most of those coming against Crown. He's under center in the I formation. Sawani bluffs pressure and a handoff to Kern. Or make that Billups for a moderate pickup to the 21 yard line. And that, like you mentioned, Mickey, I mean, clock is burning, 5.49 to play, yeah. and there's just not enough urgency from the Westminster offense. Yeah, this tells me that the coaching staff might not have enough faith in this passing game to get those big chunk plays. and continue to drive the ball down the field. Perry, the receiver, the near side. And Byerly takes a snap and another handoff as Billups breaks into the secondary. Pretty nice pickup for the first down. Mark him down at the 27 yard line. Is that good push by the offensive line, getting back all the way up to the 30 where that original kickoff ended. Phillips with 14 carries now on the day, over 50 yards. And the first touchdown for Westminster this season. Fresh set of downs, ball on the 28. Byerly hands it off to Kern on the left side and he pushes ahead for a nice pickup to the 34 yard line. So Westminster continues to build positives in the running game. They're staying on schedule for the most part on first and second down. It's just, it's been hard for them to get anything going in the passing game, even though they've had some opportunities early. And if you remember on that first drive of the game, Zeibel just overthrew a wide open receiver and that yeah. kind of killed the momentum as far as airing it out. Hand off to Phillips up the middle. Marking down at the 40. Another first down pickup for Westminster. Continuing to move this clock down nearly to four minutes now. These long sustained drives are really valuable if you have a lead, but they don't do much for you if you're down. And four minutes remain in this one. Byerly, turn around, handoff, Hessel off the right side. Cuts back to the middle, making the defensive lineman Gilbert miss. 
and he falls ahead to the 45 yard line. Still, you mentioned it, a lot of positives coming out of this game for Westminster. Second down and five. I formation, Hessel, the handoff up the middle, trying to drag through three Tigers, and uh, not sure if they're helping or hurting their chances as Hessel finds a way to fall ahead and move the pile almost solely for a pickup and a first down. Penalty flag is out, and it sits at the 50-yard line on the Blue Jay logo. It's a great run, and you've seen that a lot today. This Westminster team is played extremely physical. They've not been afraid of contact. And there, they're gonna get 15 tacked onto it with a face mask penalty. Face mask on the defense. And that'll give us another Blue Jay first down. Would have loved to, s saw a couple of drives like this today, but would have liked to see another one like this a bit earlier on. Ball on the left hash for Westminster. Such a historic program in Sewanee. That 1899 team undefeated and voted the greatest college football team in 2012 by the College Football Hall of Fame. Byer looking to throw fires towards the far side and over the head of Campbell. And out of bounds and incomplete to bring up a second down in 10. The Sewanee team won five games in a single week and they were all road games. And they shut them all out. And they weren't easy opponents either as we have a player down on the field. And it's Gilbert as they will attend him. We'll take a break. 3.07 to play in this one. Sewanee leads 32-14. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP Board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Desmond Gilbert able to walk off on his own power. So that's good to see. Second down and 10 ball on the 33 yard line of Sewanee after the overthrow from Byerly. 3.05 to play in this ball game. High formation, Byerly will look to pass and heaves it over the middle of the field, intercepted by Kaysen Holder inside the five yard line. Another interception for Holder this season. Again had two in week one, and he picks up two more today. What a start for the junior. Yeah, he's been all over the place and able to jump that route, not jump the route, but hang in behind it, get that overthrown football and flip this field. And now Swanee theoretically just needs one first down to put this game on ice. Rather, the first interception officially for Holder as remembering now that when he had the first half was waved off. Still, Holder showing his ball hawking abilities. Swanee backed up on their own five yard line, handoff to Walker Robinson, and he drives ahead for a pickup of one. And going back to that Sewanee history, and uh, we don't want to see extracurriculars from Dawson Brant. At this point in the football game, him and Hickerson going at it. But like you mentioned, five wins in a single week, all of those shutouts. John Heisman's Auburn team was the only team to put points up on Sewanee that season, 10 points. But undefeated season for Sewanee. They were one of the charter members of the SEC. Fortunately, they did not win a single conference game in their time. And they went back and joined the SAA again as Robinson through the middle, swipes away from one defender before falling ahead to the 17 yard line. Yeah, just a historic program that has gotten a lot of coverage because of that feat that they accomplished. One of the 
great college teams of all time. And in a time where football was being played kind of like how Westminster has played this game today. It was offensively at the very least. It was a game of inches. You try and push the line as far as you can on any given play, but not a ton of big chunk plays. So it appears we won't see Jeremiah Young return to this game. He had a couple of masterful throws. One to Alfred, one to Dyer Barnes for touchdowns in the first half as that handoff to Robinson goes for maybe one. See what Young's health will be like going forward for Sawani. Maybe just twinged his ankle a little bit, but the Tigers finished two and eight a year ago. They did not win a single conference game. And they go to Andy McCollum this season as the head man. And he brings in with him a completely new coaching staff, but he does bring in Mike Pelton as his defensive coordinator who spent a lot of time with him at Georgia Tech on the defensive side of the football. Pelton was also a very talented player for Auburn when he played there from 91 to 94. In 93, Auburn went 11 and 0. Short pickup for Sewanee as the clock continues to run down. He was drafted by the Chiefs, signed a free agent contract with the Colts, but back into the coaching game, he mentored Demarcus Ware at Troy. And now they want to try to mentor this Sewanee team and rebuild this program who haven't won a conference championship since 2000. And they will move to two and, or make that one and one now before they host Millsaps next week. And they begin their SAA conference slate. Very tough conference in Division Three football. As Bragg will take the knee, Westminster falls to 0-2. And they will take the road to travel to Batesville to take on Lyon next week. And then crown the week after before they return home to take on Martin Luther on October 7th. And that's where we will see you. Valiant effort by Westminster today. But it was not enough as Sewanee took advantage of big plays. And they take the victory 32 to 14. We will sign off from Fulton, Mickey Doolittle. Aaron Mosier with you. It was a pleasure to broadcast this one. We thank you for joining us. We'll see you in a few weeks when Westminster hosts Martin Luther and gets into UMAC conference play. Until then, we'll see you next time. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future.